tell me about, uh, you worked for 20-some years as a teacher and a librarian, a yes. school library, which is a little bit unusual experience for an ALA president. Tell us um, about that and how um, you are going to be incorporating some of the school librarian issues into your presidency. Well, um, actually it's the perfect background for an ALA president because um, I have such a strong background for um, being in the field, in practice, with students every day trying to build the expertise of my students. And um, what happened is that I developed a real passion for the essence of, of librarianship, which is that you empower those that you work with to be all that they can be. And I carried that passion with me even as a school administrator. I always have students at my core. I have the people I serve in my heart, and every decision I make is based on what can I do to empower them to succeed. I think it's the same kind of vision that I'm carrying into ALA. I um, campaigned on the idea of transforming libraries and transforming communities through libraries. I think now is the time when libraries of all kinds need to step up. And we need to think about what are we offering through our libraries that is targeted to the priorities and the, and the needs and the passions of those we serve. And then mold our, our library programs and our operating procedures and our vision around empowering those we serve to be successful. So I hope to continue that. I, I know I will continue that uh, as ALA president. One of the great things is that uh, part of the ALA strategic plan is transforming libraries. And that's exactly what I believe in. I just went, oh, wow, this is perfect. Um, so Maureen Sullivan, we started that issue several presidents back through advocacy, and um, Molly Raphael has certainly done that, Empowering Communities, this year. Maureen is going to extend that, and it's my intent, and Maureen's in my intent, to work together closely so that we can pull this transforming vision out and really uh, set libraries up for a greater public awareness and acceptance and a real empowerment of our communities. Tell us how, um, what you might have learned from your New York City experience that will help school librarians. Well, that was absolutely, I was director of library services in New York City. And it is the largest school system in the United States. We had uh, 1,700 schools when I left. Not libraries and all of those, but um, what I learned was how to move large systems and how to plan strategically so that your focus is on the vision, but you figure out the way to move the system and actually make changes in a large system. The librarians in New York City schools are among the best librarians I've ever known. Every day they face challenges that, um, that are unique to a large urban system, that are really profound. Many of our students are um, in situations where they don't have a lot of the they don't have computers at home necessarily. They don't have access to materials or books. And uh, the librarians in New York City really have stepped up their dynamic, wonderful people. And what I've learned is that we all rise to challenging situations, that it's important to pay attention to those we serve, and that school libraries absolutely make a huge difference in the lives of our students. And um, so the passion that I developed in New York City 
will carry me through, and I intend to do everything I can to build the public understanding of what school libraries do, to change the dynamics so that people understand that these are the very skills that students need to succeed in college and career and for the rest of their lives, and that um, school librarians work with other yeah, kinds yeah. of libraries, and we form yeah. a network of support that lasts for a lifetime. Great. And this is almost this is also a way where public and school libraries can join together and, and so gather. And academic as well. Um, when I was in New York City, we had a, a study committee that is continuing. I left uh, just six months ago, so I, I'm still a part of the New York City community. But um, we formed a committee with the uh, City University of New York librarians, a task force, to look at the transition from high school to college and what were those gaps in the skills, the information skills that students needed to carry them forth, the critical thinking skills that will enable them to succeed in college. So that collaboration between school libraries and all the way up through K through 12, that coherent development that doesn't drop off when students finish high school but continues on through whatever, whether it's work or higher education, is really important. The collaboration with public libraries is essential because what we're trying to do is to build a community that surrounds all of our patrons. And so the idea of um, a lifelong continuum and of connecting our students to libraries in the public schools so that when they leave the public schools, they are lifetime library users. Also, the connection to the community and to community businesses and agencies and families in the community. I think we can start in school, but we need to build those connections so that people naturally feel connected to their public libraries as well. Well, that's really tying it all together. Um, thank you for talking with us. It's and my pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your convention. Thank you.